Hello YouTubers, so I know on the last video I released and put on that I said I wouldn't, we weren't going to do any more of the um, table displays and um, cake decoration flowers until after Christmas but I was kind of sat here, um, I'm not in a sort of in a situation where I can show you anything really to do with the Christmas decorations at the moment um, so I wanted to come and I just thought I would dissemble and resemble showing you how I wrap and make the the table designs. So basically all we've got is broken down a jar with fish sand in it and some clay made flowers. So we're going to look at those in a second but I'm sure you can appreciate they look pretty amazing. I was very very pleased with the way they came out and actually taking it apart it was very few components that it actually needed to, uh, to 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 give it the desired look okay so I'm going to just go through with you now and show you which ones and what what we use I'll just pop that to one side so the first thing you're going to want to do is get a jar now I bought a load of jars I, I make pickles and things like that um, this was actually some of my pickle jars I will now need to replace them um, pop through the dishwasher nice and clean and sort it out and then I literally just with hot hot glue string this came from the works it was two pound for a long 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 bit it did 14 14 jars so I was very pleased with that and then filled it with fish sand which you can see is really it's really effective and it's exactly what you want it weighs it down and it gave it a good amount of weight in order so that the flowers because clay can be quite heavy same as um, fondant can be quite heavy heavy to use as well and it weighed it down beautifully so it didn't fall over I popped a few pretty stones in the top I didn't really put all those into a right at the end so I don't know how well it I'll be able to get the um, we'll be able to get it in but we will give it a go so within that table dressing there is uh, one colour lily very simple to make I made these without a mould um, and, and I used a cheese grater very very clever I'll just move and zoom you in a bit so you can sort of see okay so that's your colour lily which is okay pretty good my daughter had um, eggplant as a, a flavour, I was going to say, um, for her wedding. So that was why we used the colour lily. Two roses. First one being, these are um, half roses com in comparison. I have got some really big ones which went in the top tier cake. But I did keep all of these bits like this basically the same. So we've got a white one and we had a purple one. All exactly the same these ones just got sparkly leaves on it this one has. I didn't generally as a rule use sparkly leaves but I did on the odd one I've got green fingers because I've been doing um, Christmas roses still I'm still doing Christmas roses okay and then next we had two sets of jasmine so it was just two different colors that was the deep, deep sort of egg part, aubergine kind of colour to go with the, the theme of the wedding. And then there's some white. Always good for, as a natural, um, just to sort of tone things down, shall we say. Then comes the, where I would then consider putting in greenery, so shrubbery of some description so I did a previous video on how to make ferns this was one of them um, if you can see that there so that was quite a good one that goes in next and then I've got two pieces of ivy also shown in a different video how to make it very simple but very effective okay now you don't want these too short but at the same time you don't want them too long okay so I've got a, a longish piece there 
you don't have them to have them that long if you don't want to what I liked was it coming down the side of the jar which I'll show you in a second and then I had a shorter one which has managed to squeeze itself together like so I mean these have already been used so it's it's a bit everything's sort of been a bit squished in boxes and whatnot we've got a little twizzly bit on the end there look that's just I'll show you how to do that in a second so two pieces of um, ivy let me zoom out a little bit okay so I'll just push that down so see how the long piece of um, ivy comes down the side of the jar which was what I wanted and then right at the very top here I just put a double of glue that where I mean you can't actually see it on on film um, it just holds it into place and again we've got some bits this side and there's another piece of ivy there okay like I say it's all been squished in a box so it's not given its full potential as it was used still very good and then just to top it off and finish it we did some bows just in the aubergine 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 just like that double bow and then I glued them to a little double of glue just on the back on of a wire and then you can just pop, pop them in the top I didn't actually add this into the um, the display until afterwards I just kind of slid it in okay so I'm going to push all these back so the first thing we're going to do is you want one central piece so you want one center and then you the with this it may be completely wrong but this is how I do it and I think that they turned out very well and I was very pleased with them so one focal point in the middle so that's where we got the color lily from okay so then we're going to get our roses and I like to back end mine so basically what I mean by that is if you're going to put one on the front you're going to put one on the back some people use threes which is a good idea but I needed to keep it fairly small and, and compact so I put use a pair of pointy nose pliers these ones work just fine and just bend it to the position that you want it at it's easier to do it with pointy nose pliers you can get right down into the back there if you can see that uh, there and you can just really pull it forward whereas if you use your fingers you'll find that it won't be as close to the stems as what you what you want so I put my calla lily slightly taller slightly so it's slightly higher up than the rows either side so there's one like so and that would be the other and then that like bookends it so you've got the calla lily in the middle and then the um, the two roses so that would be my first tape that I would do so I would do this in the green because it's I don't know I just did just did it in the green I'm sure it might be in the brown but I felt as though because it would be finishing with the ivy and the bread and the shrubbery that or oh, maybe it should be in the brown you know looking at that because it's brown outsides there um, let's do it in the brown I prefer to work with the brown so let's have a look let's open up this one so when wrapping try and keep your wrapping as um, thin as possible because you, you want to keep it as tight as possible because you don't want um, you don't want it to be too thick okay so when I was wrapping the actual items like the stems and things like that I kept it as a half width or quarter width for each piece now I did buy off of Amazon for $7.99 which I didn't actually have at the time I bought this recently it's this tape cutter it's I'd like to say to you it's amazing but it's not but it does do its job you've just got to be patient with it okay so you feed it in one end if you can see the blades inside there that this is basically going to quarter width it if you want to half width you can 
take the um, blades out, just two of them. Do be careful if you put your finger in there like I've just done because they are sharp. So you're going to uh, pull it through just a little bit. Now I haven't stretched it. So we'll keep that for afterwards, okay? And then you're just going to hold it down. Not push it down, you're just going to hold it down. And you're going to pull. And if you can see, that kind of works. It starts out good, but... So there, it's only cut one side, which is probably because I've got it going at skew width. It's got to be completely straight. But I've got a half width there and two thin widths there, quarter widths. But today we're going to use full width. Um, bear with me two seconds. So my cat's just trying to get into my daughter's bedroom and she's got an indoor rabbit. So she's not allowed in there. Okay, so we're just going to use normal width. I'm not going to make it any thinner because I want it to hold to hold tight. Okay, just cut that off. Now some people pull this and like um, loosen off the, the wax and everything and activate it while they're doing it. But I like to pull it before I start. Then I know what I've got and what I've got to work with. Okay, so as soon as you pull that it activates the wax so now that will stick to itself. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get as tight as I can right underneath here. Okay. So we're going to squeeze it together where I want it. Ooh, this could be this bit starting it off can be quite fiddly. Okay, so don't be don't be just put off. You can put everything else into shape afterwards. As long as you've got the height that you want in the placement, the rest of it can go and be worked out later. Okay, so I'm going to put it as, as tight as I can without breaking it. And I'm going to get it as high as I can. As, up, as high as you can do it. Now I find it easier to turn it upside down. And then just gently, just go around a couple of times. You don't need to go around mega, mega times. Oh, see now I see how easy that is to pull and then have it sort of split off. So it's not great, it's not very easy. But once you've started it, you'll find it easier. Okay, so that is the start. So I've now got my two roses and my calla lily, which I'm just going to tilt turn slightly, like so. Okay. So the next thing that I'm going to put in are the two jasmine. Now, if you look, I've got one, ugh, one very dark red one, like that, and one white one. So you kind of want to keep them away from the, like the colours that, that, that sort of suit. Um, bear with me. Right, so we're going to put, uh, look at it all the time. Um, and see what sort of looks good. So I think this one will pull the rose leaves forward and I'm going to put it here. I know it's very similar to this colour here but there's going to be a lot of greenery in the middle between them. Now the white one I'm going to put behind I'm going to put it here. Okay so it's not really next to anything white as such. They obviously got the, the white rose but it's not not sort of touching. So now you've just got to kind of squeeze it in, separating some leaves and some petals and whatnot, and then just pop it in like so. Okay, so I've put those two in where I want them. So now I'm just going to go around with the same piece of tape. If you find that these things are in the way, just push them up gently, and then afterwards you can pull them back down. Okay, so now I want to go as high as I can again. Because I want to keep the top as, as tight as possible. So going upside down. It can make your arms ache a little bit. Because it gets quite heavy. Especially when you're doing it in clay. I mean fondant can be the same. Obviously if you're using fondant you've got to be a little bit more careful. Because you will break it. Okay. Right okay so I'm happy with that. So just bringing it down just a little bit now. Like so. So the next thing I've got is just sort of gen generally just sort of um, space them out and whatnot. 
so just sort of loosely so you know roughly where everything is um, one of my pet hates is make sure your leaves are facing the correct way for whatever it is on there for otherwise it looks um, looks a bit daft I like I, that, that's just something I think because each leaf has got their own each flower has got their own leaf um, it's it's very important I think okay so the next thing I'm going to do is just use the fern so there's the fern piece so I'm going to look around and see where we could do with a piece of shrubbery in there I'm just going to put a bit more tape around there it feels a bit loose I mean that's the other thing as, as you go do what feels right for you whatever works for you you do you do that um, go with your gut and listen to what your gut tells you because it will probably be right okay so I think so you looking from the top look and see where you've got any gaps now if you can see there I feel like there's a gap in there just in that bit there the rest of it looks pretty tight in all fairness so I'm going to put that in that piece there like so so again you've got to kind of squeeze it in there now this one's a bit floppy because I've tried to keep my wires as thin as possible okay and just move it about how you feel it works you might decide that it doesn't you don't like it in there actually I'm looking at that and thinking that maybe although it shouldn't come over like that that maybe it should go in a bit upside downy and come out like a piece of fern again like I say it's just really what works for you and see how you get on see I like that already so I'm going to keep that there and then what we're going to do is once it gets in the jar that's when you're going to make our make our um our move it about so that it gets and fills any gaps up and all that sort of thing okay so I'm going to turn mine upside down again this tape is sticky and it's really really unpleasant I mean your hands end up a stickier than a sticky thing um, and it's just not nice okay feels horrible so that's that into place now so I'm just going to, I'm going to let that come down and out if you can see that works quite well so the last two bits we've got to put in the last two components are the ivy now when you put the ivy in you want to stand them upright and face them inwards wherever you want to put them so I'm going to put one piece here kind of squeeze it in but face it inwards because then when you bend it downwards and it's, it's going to come down backwards so which is what you want and then it will hang down the side of the vase uh, vase or jar or whatever it is that you use now I've got one there and I think I'm going to put the other one here if you look from the top always look from the top you've got this fern piece over here um, this piece here so I'm going to put it here so it would be one two three okay so again put it so it's face in get it all around the right way and it would go out wouldn't it right okay so face in so try and, I know it's a bit fiddly and then the first time round you're just gonna try and go around and just keep it in as tight as you can and then we're going to turn it upside down and then we can go oh blinking egg I've just broken it off again don't know my own strength ladies and gentlemen all right so now cut these to what length you want them. I know that this goes in a jar because that's what I took it out of. Um, so I'm just going to carry on and go all the way down as far as you can. Don't panic too much though because you're in a jar. Oh, you're in a jar of sand. You're pretty much well covered. Okay, so don't worry too much. But you do want to get the very top of it because that's the bit you'll be able to see. Okay, but I'm just going to take mine all the way down 
because it, it keeps them nice and tight okay like so now when I get to the bottom I'm going to turn over I'm going to have a little look check everything looks okay and I think that looks pretty good to me bend the bits over where you want them bent and other bits so I'm quite happy with that if you look at it from all the angles that's not too bad. Now in the bottom of the jar, because I've got um, such a long stem, if I just put it in like that, it's just going to move about in, even with the sand in there. So I made some feet, literally just like so. They just kind of stood out like tripod. And then I've got a bit that stuck out too far, like this bit here. Cut it off because you don't want loose bits like that okay now this is the more difficult part because you've got to get it into the jar now and I don't know whether I'll actually be able to do it because it's obviously it's full so you've got your tripod so what you can do is pop it in and as you put it in you're going to kind of push and when I did it I filled it up both like um, halfway popped these in and then added the rest of the, the sand. Let's see if we can clear a path for it. I don't think I'm going to get it in. Well, that's a shame. I need to empty half out. But you can get the gist of when you put it in. If you put half, half fill the jar, push it inwards, turn in it like that, and it will come down to the bottom. And you'll see just the very tips at the bottom. Then fill up the rest of the jar with your sand. Um, because I'm not going to get that in there, I don't think. Oh, it's going. No, I, I'm not going to be able to get it all the way in there without breaking it, I don't think. So, right, I'll leave it like that one, and what we'll do is we'll look at this one. Okay. So once you've got it all in, if you look towards the bottom, you might get which I haven't got actually I haven't actually got on this one sometimes you can see just the very tip of a wire that's okay it's not a problem it just means it's in, in, in place but this all of mine have got either three legs pronged out like so or four so it's either or but you must have the minimum of three otherwise it will not sit straight and then See how that just comes out the top of this one. I just got one of my bows once I've got everything where I wanted it to. If you look, even though it's not in the jar flat, they're very, very similar in shape. And then bend them about then once you get to that point. Move everything about as you want to. And get, ooh, get it where it sh you feel like it should be. So sort of even it out and see that should be over that way the good thing about these ferns is there's no they don't tend to stick one way you can bend them over which is good if you've got a gap move a leaf into it do do whatever it is you need to sort of do and bend it into place and then it will look pretty much like this well, I felt a bit like a Blue Peter person then. Um, <laughs> here's one we made earlier. I'll use this one because it's all gone in the jar. But it's got exactly the same stuff on it. The components are exactly the same. And they look exactly the same of how we've just put it in there. We've just done exactly the same thing. This one's got a ruscus leaf on it that the other one didn't have. Which I didn't actually realise when I took them apart. Or I'd have used this one. Doesn't matter. Ruscus leaf. Done a previous video on them. Love the the Ruscus branch. They are really beautiful. They look really gorgeous. Very natural. Okay, so we shoved shoved it in, pushed it in as hard as you'll get it in, and um, then I, like I say, made some bows because I wanted the aubergine to match the, my daughter's wedding, and then look from the top and just see if you've got any gaps which I have one there if you can see it just a slight one just 
push it down not too deep just enough to hide the glue on the back like so and then that looks really really lovely I'm sure you'll appreciate so there you go ladies and gentlemen I was going to show you how to make the twizzly bits on the ends I mean even on the end of the Ruskus branch they've got one and then on the end of the ivy see how click 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 see how that one's got one on the end there look like that I'll show you how to make that quickly now so you can use either half width tape full width tape or quarter and actually quarter of the width tape is really good to use for it but obviously it's so very very thin so all you need to do is take a piece of your tape pull it like so just a couple of pieces a couple of way up because you don't want to do loads and roll it so just turning it starting at the end just turn start turning and then just keep it going now what I tend to do is I've got a pot full of these because I don't like if I've got some some tape left over and there's nothing wrong with it it's too short to do anything with I will sit and do some of these so just keep turning twisting um, sometimes it's nice to turn and twist and then pull it to activate the wax because that kind of sticks it all together within an inch of its life so just like so like that and then we're just going to cut it and then to get the the, the spiral all you're going to do is with a paintbrush start in one end hold on to it and just wrap it round i'll do a massive one because i want to show you sort of push it up as long as you've got your finger on it then just to hold sure hold it and make sure it sort of stays in place like so and push it over then i squeeze it on and give it a roll and then it comes off like that gently give it a pull like that and like that and there you have your little spiral now this then I keep one flat end like that and then as you're winding your flower you just pop that on and just carry on winding down and there you have your little springy end so I hope that's been slightly, I'm sorry I couldn't get that one back into the jar, it was very very close, just not quite close enough look, there's a slight gap there. So it's because I, uh, before when I did it I put it in half and then uh, the sand filled it, uh, put it in after half of the jar filled and then filled up the rest of it with the rest of the sand. Then I sprinkled in the, the very pretty, um, let me show you these. Just a few in each, oh, I'm sticking to the sand now because I'm all waxed. Um, just a few in each pot, they're just off of Amazon. A big bag, I think they were £7. They're beautiful. As I'm sure you can appreciate, they're lovely. You can't really see them in the top, but I guarantee some part of the wedding party will have parted it and had a look. Um, which is what we wanted, we wanted to make sure that uh, they were... They were everybody could see them and they were all the same so there you go ladies and gentlemen so i will say hit that subscribe button um very very important i've had some, an overwhelming amount of support which has been fantastic which is thank you very much but if you hit that subscribe button um you'll never miss another video that i do um i want to start bringing you some bits and showing you through some bits that i've actually made to go on the reefs that will be my next video i think and then if you want to see something that I make in particular, um, if you leave it in a comment below, um, not on this video, on the next one, and then I'm going to put, and we're going to build a reef, and I'm going to show you how I build it. Okay, so again, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button now, and I'll speak to you soon.